Good morning. Welcome to Tri-State Baptist Temple. We invite you to stand with us. We're going to sing together as we begin today when the roll is caught up yonder. So stand with us, follow along on the screen, and sing aloud with us. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saints on earth shall gather over on the other shore And the roll is called of yonder I'll be there When the roll is called of yonder When the roll is called of yonder When the roll is called of yonder good. We're glad you're here today. We're going to have a word of prayer as we begin today and just ask the Lord uh, to bless our time together. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we're thankful again for the day and uh, we're just excited about the opportunity to, uh, Lord, meet together again and spend time worshiping you, uh, thinking about you and and just, uh, uh, Lord, we're excited to hear preaching from your word today. And so we're praying that you would bless our time together, help us to continue to grow and, and to uh, just to be edified through the things that uh, we are a part of today. And we're praying, Lord, that uh, we would just uh, uh, heed uh, your word today. And so we're thankful for our time together, Lord. We ask you to be with our families uh, from our church and our community who are still dealing with power outages and and, and loss of water, Lord, we're praying you would just uh, give them grace and give them, Lord, the supplies they need to, uh, uh, for uh, these times and in their life and, and the things that are happening, Lord. And we're praying and thankful for all the, uh, the workers who are, are been diligent trying to get all these things restored, Lord. Help them, give them uh, just some uh, wisdom and give them protection as they're doing all these things, Lord. But we're thankful for your goodness and your grace. And we're thankful, Lord, we know we can trust you in every circumstance in life. So we're thankful for all your goodness. Uh, be with us today, Lord. Help us to grow. We ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. Well, we're glad you're here today. You can be seated, and we're uh, thankful that we can be here. And, and it wasn't very warm in here earlier uh, this morning, but we do have some heat rolling, and, and uh, we're glad that uh, we can uh, uh, be together today and spend some time together. And uh, we are planning on having a regular week this week and uh, having services on Wednesday and and uh, having our basketball practices tomorrow and Tuesday for our Kings Court basketball program. And, and uh, we were able to have our Kings Court yesterday, and uh, we enjoyed uh, being able to see those families again and uh, uh, made it through the whole day. And so it was good, and uh, we're glad that we're able to do that and looking forward to just continuing to seeing things kind of go back to normal schedules as we are dealing with all these uh, all, all this snowstorm, but we're thankful that you're here today. We're going to sing another song again together, and so you can stay in your seat, but I want to encourage you to sing out, follow along on the screen. We're going to sing Kneel at the Cross. <laughs>
right. Well, it is a blessing to see you today. I think we're going to have some special music in just a moment, giving them just an opportunity to get ready for that. But we are thankful for you being out and being here. And uh, it has been just an incredible uh, experience the last couple weeks. We know we have folks here today that still are without power and uh, electricity, those things that, uh, you know, this has uh, really helped us to put in perspective uh, how thankful we ought to be for the things we take for granted every day, isn't it? Just the basic things that we have. And uh, we're thankful for you all being here and, and uh, for everybody being able to uh, have the help of the Lord just to get through these past couple weeks. And uh, we are praying for people who are still without power. Uh, some of you, if you live out solid away, then uh, you don't uh, and won't maybe for a little while. Even in Ashland, the bolts, we knew they had been out, and theirs has gone out again and is still out. And uh, so just so many people are affected by this in so many different ways. And uh, so we're praying for families, and we're just asking again, please let us know if, if there's something that you need. And if you don't have power, as long as the church has got heat, you can come here and we'll turn it on for you. You can stay here. And, and uh, I told you that last Sunday, and then Monday night, the power here went out, and it was off for over 24 hours. Didn't come back on till Tuesday night. Here, I can't I can't remember it ever being out that long before in uh, the 14 years or so that we've been back here at the church. And uh, so it's been an incredible time, and uh, certainly uh, a difficult uh, time. But this week, temperatures look like they're going back up, and uh, so that'll help uh, men be able to get their jobs done and uh, for things to kind of move out of the way and we can see what we're left with after this is all over with and it's probably going to be ugly uh, to look around at the yards and trees and all the things that are left after the snow leaves uh, but uh, we're thankful so far that uh, all of our families have been able to stay warm and get what they need to get through this time i know there's been people in the area who have died because of the exposure to the cold just folks who didn't leave their homes and uh, they just uh, they just stayed there and and uh, and they just uh, they just got so cold that uh, that they passed away so we're just thankful for God helping our families and uh, we want you to continue to pray <coughs> for one another it was good to have our basketball ministry yesterday it's good to be back doing something serving the Lord something going on here at church and uh, we were able to get through that day uh, we had one quarter of the last game to go and the power flickered and the lights went out and everybody just groaned all across the whole building no no not again but uh, they didn't go completely out and uh, we were able to finish up so it was it was good for me just to get out and have that going on and have your mind occupied some other way so it was a, uh, we were able to share the gospel Evan took a couple of the games and I took one and we shared God's word at halftime and you know, God can speak to people through circumstances and events, and so we're praying these things will be used of God for good in hearts and in lives, in mine and in others as well. So, uh, so we're glad you're here today. Wednesday night, ministries, as far as we know, we'll have them normal times, and, uh, and um, we'll, uh, we'll look forward to that. That'll be a blessing. But we're going to have a special here today, and uh, we'll look to God's Word together. <clears throat> I wonder have I done my best for Jesus who died upon the cruel tree to think of his great sacrifice at Calvary I know my Lord expects the best from me. How many are the lost that I have lifted? How many are the chained I've helped to free? I wonder have I done my best for Jesus when he has done so much for me. The hours that I've wasted are so many. The hours I've spent so Christ for few. Because of all my lack of love for Jesus, 
I wonder if his heart is breaking too. How many are the lost that I have lifted? How many are the chained I've helped to free? I wonder have I done my best for Jesus when he has done so much for me. I wonder have I cared enough for others or have I let them die alone? I might have helped a wander to the Savior the seed of precious life I might have sown. How many are the lost that I have lifted? How many are the chained I've helped to free? I wonder have I done my best for Jesus when he has done so much for me? When he has done so much for me. Amen. Very good. Very good. Well, we are again thankful for you being here, and uh, it's just a good place to be. Pray for folks who uh, are still in, and some folks have had to move, uh, try to move out of their homes and find places where they can shelter and stay warm. So uh, we're just thankful together that we can. Uh, we can move through this, and uh, we want to be a help to anyone who has a need. Just please let us know, and we'll do what we can. Pray for folks who, uh, you know, all the things going on, plus maybe if you don't feel well or you got things going on at the doctor, doctor's appointments going on. I know uh, Mom has some things coming up this week that uh, we want you to be in prayer for her about. But uh, just remember all of our families with the things they're facing. Uh, but we are thankful that, you know, uh, just about six weeks is Easter Sunday. And so we didn't get to come to church on Easter Sunday last year, but I sure I'm praying we do this year. It'll be a great day, won't it? We had so many special things planned last year, and so we're just going to try to uh, pray and uh, see that those things can happen this year. But uh, we're thankful for God's grace to us. Uh, why don't you take your Bible this morning and, and find the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 19, and I want you to look with me at some scripture here. I want to ask you the question, why did he weep? Why did he weep? And uh, you'll see that in Luke chapter 19. And I'm going to begin to read in verse 41. And I'm going to read down to verse number 44. But I, want you to, I want you to look at this passage of scripture. And I wonder if you've ever asked yourself that question. Why did he weep? Luke chapter 19, and uh, verse number 41, I'll begin to read there, and I'll read down to verse number 44, and of course, we're speaking about the Lord Jesus, and the Bible says in the 41st verse, and when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, if thou hadst known, even thou at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace. But now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. I want to ask you the question again today, why did he weep? Why did he weep? And I want us to understand that today. And I want you to see what the Lord has for us in this passage of Scripture. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and grace to us. Uh, we pray, Father, for... Uh, families in our community, uh, Lord, uh, I, without power, some without water, uh, all the utilities, and Lord, some, it's really not known yet how much longer they'll have to uh, 
uh, endure that. Uh, but Lord, we thank you, God, that you know all about it. And uh, Lord, we're praying for folks that you'll just give them wisdom. And uh, Lord, you'll provide opportunities for them. And uh, Lord, they'll be able to stay warm and fed. And, and uh, Lord, we're just trusting God that if we can be a help to any of our families as a church, that God will know the need, will be made aware of it so that we can help out and uh, we can do what we can. We thank you, Lord. We've had folks in our church offer God to do what they could to get to people that maybe need things with four-wheelers or whatever the necessities are. Uh, we, are, uh, Lord, want to be a help. And so, uh, Lord, you lead and guide us. And, Lord, thank you for uh, these families who were able to get out and be here today. And I pray, Father, you'd encourage them. And, Lord, it's been good to be together here and, and uh, to worship you and to sing these songs and to hear God, the good music, and Lord, to have our children able to get out and, and be taught uh, great truths from your word. Lord, we, uh, we want to continue on this year. Lord, whether it's uh, whatever we're facing, whether it's the issues of health and pandemics that have struck the world, or whether, Lord, it has been through difficult times of transition in our country, or Lord, whether it's these uh, nature, these calamities, Lord, that we're facing. God, we want to keep on keeping on. We want to continue on uh, just serving you, living for you, uh, being people that believe your word and just choosing to serve you and live for you. And so speak to all of our hearts today. Lord, somebody may have come to church on this day and maybe they have many other days, but Lord, they've never come to you in their own heart, never personally realized the cross was personal that you died for their sin. They've never asked you, God, to forgive them for that. And uh, Lord, they've never, they've never opened up their heart to receive the gift of eternal life, to, to be sure that God, Jesus Christ, did not die in, uh, in vain and rise from the grave, uh, Lord, uh, and it not, not, Lord, have been received by them. And so, Lord, we're praying today, this would be a great day for someone to make life's greatest decision, to be born again and be saved. And Lord, may each of us just have open hearts. May we desire to hear, to grow, to, uh, Lord, uh, Lord, let you have more and more of our lives uh, so that, God, uh, you'll be magnified. So your will be done today, and may we just be obedient people to you. Uh, we pray and ask it, God, in Jesus' name uh, we pray, and amen, amen. Well, when we read this passage of Scripture, I I wonder if you've ever asked yourself, what could have made the Lord weep here as we know that he did? We have it, we have it written here for us. And uh, we see this in our heart's eye. And uh, we can picture it. We can imagine it. But have you ever asked yourself, what could have been on his heart, the Lord's heart, that brought, that brought such sorrow so that it physically manifested itself visibly in him as he stood there that day. What could cause that in any life? Well, I think all of us could probably give reasons why there are many things that can bring that level of sorrow and grief into a heart. I think when we look at the Lord and when we read the scriptures, we have to think about that that one of those things is in the area of regret. Regret. Regret for the loss of full potential. Regret for never realizing all the possibilities. Regret for so much left undone without the hope of recovering from that. Thinking about the loss that's unavoidable. I think that kind of regret can certainly impact our life. I believe it impacted the Lord's life. I believe that was at the forefront of his heart and mind that day as he stood there looking at the city of Jerusalem, at the people of that city. We know the Lord is in the closing days of his ministry uh, here in this world. Verse 37 said that uh, he, he was come nigh when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives. We know the Lord, the Lord was entering once again into Jerusalem. We know that, uh, that we often think about or talk about his Passion Week, that week leading up to his crucifixion, his burial and resurrection, and those events that took place there. This happened 
during that period of time. We know the Lord never spent the night in Jerusalem that, that, that week leading up to his crucifixion, except the night of the, of the night before his crucifixion, when he was taken captive. Uh, he would leave, he would go out to Bethpage or go out to Bethany, uh, up into the Mount of Olives, but he never spent the night in Jerusalem, and each day traveled back into the city. And so the Bible said that this day, as he was coming close to the city, now even at the descent into the city from the Mount of Olives, the Bible said in verse 41, when he was come near, he beheld the city and he wept over it. Can you imagine what it might have been like to be passing there that day? That was a place, that was a well-traveled area in and out of the city. Can you imagine what it might have been like to walk by that day? You, on your own business, going into Jerusalem. It was Passover week. And here's this individual and these men surrounding him. And they are uncomfortable looking. You can tell they don't understand what's going on. But you can see this man. And you can see him standing there weeping. You know, there are levels of grief and sorrow. And when you're in the ministry for any long period of time and you're trying to help families or go through difficult trials with families, you see all kinds of grief and levels of sorrow demonstrated in all different kind of ways. You know, when a heart is so filled with pain and grief the whole body can heave and move as that individual is weeping in the grips of that sorrow of heart, that pain in their life. They're responding to it. And a man can weep with his whole body uh, being impacted by that grief and never say a word because there isn't any words that can be said to try to describe what they're feeling. Why the Lord Jesus? Why is He responding that way? This is something that we ought to want to know. We ought to want to understand this about the Lord. When we see Him going through that, what caused this reaction in the Lord? We know who He is. We know who this is. We know that, that this was God in human form. John 1, verse 1 John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We know very clearly Jesus Christ was God come into this world in human form. We know who He was, and we know He always knew who He was. He always knew who He was, that He was God, that He was the Son of God, the sent one, the Christ. We know He always knew where He came from and why He came. John 1 verse 14 said the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He was sinless. He was the perfect man and yet he never ceased being God, perfect and righteous. And he stood there that day with his whole body heaving and, and weeping without words as his disciples watched him, as those passing by watched him, uh, what caused that sorrow and weeping in his heart and in his life? This is God incarnate. We ought to want to know why he wept. We ought to want to know why. I think, number one, we have to think about what he saw. What he saw. We don't always all see things the same way. We sometimes look at something, some situation or circumstance. It doesn't have to be a thing, a place. It can be a circumstance or a situation. And we only see that which is obvious. We see that which is on the surface. And what we see strikes our eye, our mind, and we put together some theory about what's going on. We perceive it in one way or the other but we don't always all see things the same way. As God standing there that day, the Lord Jesus saw everything there was to see and know about everything. There wasn't anything He didn't know everything about. And, and He saw all the way through a thing. He knew what was before that thing, 
what was going on during that thing, and he knew what was going to happen after that thing. And the Lord Jesus looked at this. A man, if he looked at a man, he knew that he knew everything about that man in a moment. He saw that man's past, he knew that man's present, and he knew that man's future. Every morning, every man, everything. The Lord Jesus, Jesus knew all of that. In verse 41, the Bible said, And when he was come near, he beheld the city. It's talking about Jerusalem. It's talking about Jerusalem, the capital of the people of God, this nation that once was known as the nation of Israel, once united, 12 tribes. We know that this is that city. And the Lord is beholding that city. And the Bible said he wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the moment are the things which belong unto thy peace. But now are they hid from thine eyes. The Lord Jesus stood there that day looking the city. And notice he said in that verse, verse 42, In this thy day, the Lord is... He has a moment in his mind, a moment. He's looking at that city and those people, and he's thinking about a moment. If you knew at this moment the door that is open to you right now, the door that's open to you, if you knew that this door is going to quickly close and that opportunity will be lost to you forever, the Lord's saying if you only knew that, if you only knew that, that's what he saw. He saw this. We know now why the Lord came. Don't we? we know why he came. We know now what he knew then. He knew why he had come. He knew why he was there at that moment. He knew he was willing to receive his own. These, these Jews, this city of Jerusalem, represented his people he knew he was willing to receive them into his heart, receive them as his people. He knew he was their Christ. He knew that. The Lord Jesus wasn't weeping for himself. He wasn't weeping for what he came to do. He tells them on the way to the cross. They're lining the streets and they're weeping as they watch this procession moving through the streets with this man who had been so beaten physically that if you didn't know who he was, you wouldn't recognize him. Someone helping him carry his cross. He's going out to be crucified and the women there stood by watching him weep and he said, do not weep for me. He said, you weep for yourselves and for your children. He wasn't weeping that day. He wasn't overcome with the grief of what he was going to have to face and what he knew he was going to have to endure. He knew it. You know, through the years that I've been in the ministry, I've dealt with people who come to me. Sometimes it's parents, and they'll come to you, and their hearts are broken about their children. Their children, young adults, these parents come and they had plans for their kids. They, 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 they had a future for them envisioned for them. And they come to you and, and they, they had just known things were going to be so different. Things were going to turn out so different when those little boys and girls were young. They, they just knew it was going to be different and and, 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 and be different than things that turned out. And, and I've had parents come, and I've had wives come to me about their husbands. And they poured out their heart about how their love is unreturned. I've had husbands who've come about their wives. Their hearts are broken. They're grieving about what might have been. They're grieving about potential that's lost. They're grieving about opportunity that's gone. They're grieving about those who've gone astray, those who never embraced what was there in front of them, uh, what awaited them. Uh, they never made the most of those opportunities. And their hearts are broken. And Jesus Christ looked at the city and he knows, he knows their hearts. And he knows his heart. And he knows the purpose God had for them in his heart. He knew God's will for these people and the potential for them as the people of God. 
You remember, th th these are God's people. From the very beginning, they were special to God. God said, I'm going to call me out of people of the world, and they're going to be special. I'm going to set them aside, and I've got something in my heart for them, uh, unlike any other people in the world. And, and God had that in His heart for them, and uh, He had a special purpose for them above all other people on planet Earth. And God made Himself known to those people. He made Himself known by the power of His miracles and by His deliverance and by His provision to them. Time and time again, they saw the hand of God. And they come to know that true and living God. And God had a purpose in His heart for them. He provided for them and allowed them to experience His love and His faithfulness to them. Through this people, God wanted to make Himself known to all the world. That's what He had in His heart for them. For them to be so close to Him and know Him as their God that through their lives the whole world will come to know the true and living God. In John chapter 1, in verse 10, the Bible said, He was in the world and the world was made by Him and the world knew Him not. He knew this was the need of the world to know Him. And He chose a people through which He would make Himself known to the world. But the Bible goes on to say in verse 11, And he came unto his own, and his own received him not. His own received him not. He began in his home city back in Nazareth. And he began to, as he grew up there, he began there to make himself known. That city, his own family, his own people, he began there to make himself known. Those people, those people, they, they rejected him. His own people. He said, I said, a prophet is not without honor except in his own city. And he left. He never went back. And he moved out into the areas of Galilee. And, and he began to do many mighty miracles there in some of those places. And yet they received him not. And they would not believe him. And he, and he said, it's going to be worse that it was for Sodom and Gomorrah for you because you've had me and you've rejected me. And he moved on and he was saddened because, because their hearts were filled with unbelief and they wouldn't receive him. He came unto his own. His own received him not. He, he moved throughout the whole land. Now he was here in this city at this moment when there were more Jews in the city of Jerusalem than there were and the rest of the whole country, all gathered there for the Passover. And he came unto his own, and his own received them not. The Lord knew what lie ahead for them. He knew. In A.D. 70, when the city again was filled with Jews from all over the world, it was Passover again. In A.D. 70, the world were there. To observe the Passover. There were families there. You remember in Luke 2 how Jesus' family went to Jerusalem to observe the Passover? All of their family. There were so many of them from Nazareth. They, they didn't really even concern themselves with where Jesus was as an 11-year-old boy. They just figured he was with some of the family. Families were here in A.D. 70 with their children, wives, with their babies, mothers, and Titus, a Roman, he would become the Roman emperor. He would arise to the throne of Rome. But now he was the general of their armies. And Israel had rebelled against Rome in A.D. 66. And there had been bloodshed. There had been rebellion. There had been uprisings. And Titus led the Roman army into Jerusalem. And he assaulted the city for five months. Jesus said, when he spoke here in this passage of Scripture, he says, For the day shall come upon thee when thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round about. Titus came in there and dug, uh, and, and, dug and put a wall around the entire city. He built a wall around Jerusalem's walls so that the people couldn't get out even if they wanted to. 
And then he trenched about the city and redirected their water supply so that no water could get into the city. He said, they're either going to they're either going to yield to me or I'm going to starve them out and they're going to die right inside their own homes. Five months. Five months. And then finally, when the gates opened, his armies moved throughout the cities and it climaxed at Passover. And Women and children, without mercy to anybody, no matter what their age was, Titus' soldiers slaughtered them wholesale, moving through the streets of the city, killing anyone and any person they came to, regardless of their age. The city was burnt. The temple was so completely re- destroyed. The Lord said, the Lord said, there'll not be one stone left standing on another one. They tore the walls down. They tore the temple apart so there there wasn't one stone left stacked on top of another one. Josephus, the most famous historian of this period of time, estimated 1.1 million Jews were slaughtered when Titus took Jerusalem. 1.1 million. And as the Lord Jesus stood there that day, he saw that. It was just as real to him as if it had been that day in A.D. 70 when it happened. He saw it. And he wept. Isaiah 46, Isaiah 46 verse 8 says, Remember this and show yourselves, men. Bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. Remember the former things of old. For I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand. I will do all my pleasure. Think what a burden it would be to know everything that will happen in the future to everyone in the most minute detail. We can't imagine that, but that's what that's who the Lord was. He spoke to his disciples about this. You, you desire to follow after me? You will follow after me. He said, they'll, they'll chase you out of the synagogues. They'll hunt you down. All uh, but one, uh, uh, two of the original 11 apostles, all were martyred, put to death for their faith in Christ. The Lord knew that about every one of them. He knew what their life held for them in the future. He knew what was going to happen to them. Imagine the burden of knowing everything about everyone. What what should we learn about watching Jesus weeping over the city of Jerusalem? What is it we ought to learn about this? about the Lord Jesus weeping as he looked out over Jerusalem, about him knowing everything about our future. What should we take to heart for our life, our family, our loved ones? Listen, the Lord knows what lies ahead of us. He knows what lies ahead. He knows what lies ahead of us down every path we choose. Every path. Whatever we choose to do in this next moment, the Lord knows what the end of that choice is going to be. He knows. He knows the wages of sin is death. He knows that for every man to live life and never repent of their sin debt is going to, is going to mean they're going to spend eternity in the lake of fire. Imagine living in a world where you knew that about everybody that, that you saw. You knew their fate. You knew their future. You knew they had the choice. You knew they had a moment where they could make a choice and decision, but you knew what the outcome of that was going to be. He knows knows in people's lives that when we sow to the whirlwind, we're going to reap the whirlwind. He knows that. He knows for us to sow the flesh, we're going to reap of the flesh. 
He knows. He knows what's going to happen when we choose that moment where we make that choice and decision. He sees what the end of it's going to be. He sees the outcome of everything we do or do not do. He knows the outcome of all of our actions and reactions or the lack of action that we ought to take. He sees the end of it all. I wonder how often he weeps over what he sees in our lives. I wonder how often he might look at us and know the future of where this moment that we're in is going to take us, this moment of opportunity. If we leave behind and look away from the possibilities for our lives that are in his heart for us, he knows where that's going to take us. He knows where that will lead us. We sometimes look back over something and we say, if I had only known, if I had only known that, The Lord does know. He already knows. He already knows. And listen, we can follow him today. Pastor, what should I take out of this message? What's here for me as we read the scripture speaking about the Lord Jesus standing there, body heaving, tears coming, nothing but groans as he looked at that city. And he knew that just in about 35 or 40 years that a million of them were going to be slaughtered in the streets. Their children, their little babies, uh, their heads bashed up against the walls. Uh, Everyone slaughtered. He knew at that moment they had a choice to make, and he knew the choice they were going to make. And he knew where it was going to lead them. What should we learn from that? We ought to learn that he knows everything about our lives. He knows every path that we're going to take. He knows the end of where that thing's going to lead us. But we know that we can stay near to him. We know today that we can choose to follow closely. We know that we can know the shelter that he provides in the storms. His strength to get through the trials. We know that the safest place to be is right with him today. And tomorrow and the next day. We know what happened to Jerusalem. We know what happened to God's people now. We know what happened because they failed to listen, to receive the Lord, because they failed to respond and because they rejected the Lord. And, you know, we feel for them. I, I, I've, I read accounts this week, historical accounts of that slaughter of those people. We think people can be cruel to one another. The, the, It doesn't even describe what happened in the slaughtering of those people in Jerusalem. We look back at them and 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 we know what happened and we feel for them. We think how different it might have been if that day the crowd had not cried crucify him away with him will not have that man to rule over us if they had not accepted Barabbas and freed a murderer and sent God to the cross to be crucified there think how different things could have been for them but right now we must consider how and if we are responding to the Lord right now how are we responding how are we How are we responding? Is he weeping, watching us right now because of the choices and decisions we make? What he saw, what he saw, that's why he wept. Because he saw what was going to happen if they made those choices and decisions. Notice number two, when he came. Verse 41 again, And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace. But now they are hid from thine eyes, for the day shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another. Notice here the Bible explains it because, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. The time of thy visitation. We know the Lord Jesus is the omni God. We say that sometimes, don't we? Omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient, all power, all knowing, everywhere. He's the omni God. What he knows cannot be contained. 
He is all and He is everywhere. We know that all this time, God had come to dwell among men. God had come to dwell among men. At this time, at this time, we know, we know that, that He visited this world. God came into the world. God visited humanity. He came down to sinful men. We know He came with an opportunity for them to receive Him. And we know that with opportunity comes responsibility. With opportunity comes responsibility. Jesus Christ is coming again. He came. There was a moment when He visited this world and the world at that moment of His visitation had an opportunity to them. There was a door opened unto them. And we know they rejected that. They did not follow through. They did not step through. But the Lord Jesus is coming back to this world. He's going to visit it again. We know He's coming again. We know that right now is an opportunity to be ready when He comes again. Right now is that moment. Before He comes and it's too late and the opportunity of the moment is gone, now is the opportunity to be ready for when He comes again. You ready to meet the Lord today? You ready to stand beside, before God and, uh, and let Him know everything He knows about you because He knows everything about you? Are you ready uh, today to stand before the Lord and think in your heart, Lord, I think I'm all right. I think I did enough good. I, I think I was not as bad as some others. I, I think that, that if you look at my life overall, uh, that you ought to accept me on the basis of that. Uh, do you think that's what's going to happen when you stand before the Lord someday? Because it isn't. He's going to look at your life and know everything about you. And like He knows everything about all men, He's going to know there's none righteous, no, not one. He's going to know that you had the opportunity now to be ready for when He came again. And He's letting you know He's coming again. He's, he's coming to visit again. But right now, there's a door of opportunity. You can be ready now, now, to receive Him as your Savior There are moments in our lives, times when God visits us. Sometimes it's through His Word. It might be at your kitchen table or in your armchair in your house when you're just reading the Bible and just all of a sudden God just shows up in your heart through His Word. He visits you. He brings something to your heart. He brings it to your mind. He pierces, even divides your Morrow and soul and spirit and discerns you and he shows you something, he visits you with truth, and you have in that moment the opportunity to respond to it. He opens up that door and he shows you this is what you need to do. There are times when the Lord visits us. Sometimes he visits us through the circumstances and situations of life. Sometimes we just got to step back and say, listen, how am I here and why am I in this? And God will speak. He'll show us. He'll, he'll show up and He'll show us, listen, this is why you're here. This is because of the choices and decisions that you've made in your life. This is where it's led you. And now I'm going to speak to you. And I'm going to show you a way out of this thing. He shows up in our lives. Sometimes He shows up in lives in special days. The birth of a child. I've had people, had men tell me, Pastor, when I saw that baby for the first time, I knew my life couldn't be the same as it used to be. I knew I was going to have to get a grip on this thing. You have to get serious about this. And, and they gave their heart and life to the Lord. And they began to live for God and be a dad to that child that, that God was pleased with. Sometimes in the birth of a child, maybe it's at, a, at the moment of marriage. Or maybe it's when your children reach certain moments in their life. And you realize, hey, you know what? My, my little baby's graduating from kindergarten. Middle school, high school, college, they come. They don't quit coming. Every time, maybe, maybe those are moments when God can visit you. Speak about that moment in the future. Sometimes God visits our lives through sickness or trials, but God shows up. God shows up, and with God, there's everything God knows. Everything He knows about the future and every choice and decision that we're going to make. 
We have moments when we can make life-changing decisions. And you know what? You know what? The world and the flesh and the devil, they will do everything they can to turn you away from those moments. They'll turn you away from those moments when the Lord is visiting in your heart and life. And, and they'll cause you to say, well, I'll, I'll do that later. At another time. There'll be another opportunity for that in my life. Maybe and maybe not. Maybe and maybe not. Listen, we have to seize those moments when God's visiting our heart. When his, when his word is working in our heart, when there's a conviction and when there's that compulsion in our life that this is what I need to do, this is right, and, and, and the world is, is, is trying to get your attention and the devil's trying to distract you and the flesh is trying to put you off. You've got to seize that moment in your life, turning away uh, from those things under the Lord. Uh, you've got to listen to God's word over and over he speaks, and he speaks to us, and he visits us. Time passes quickly, and those moments sometimes never come again. We need to see the Lord here. It's just a simple passage of Scripture, four verses. Just one moment in the life of the Lord in the last days before he was going to the cross. It's just a verse that mentions it. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and he wept over it. But we need to see the Lord here. Body heaving, weeping, openly. Not ashamed. His heart broken because of what he sees and knows is going to happen. What he sees and knows is going to happen. And today the Lord Jesus is visiting us. He's calling to us to respond to him. He says it all the time in his word, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. He's visiting you. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. The Lord Jesus knows what will happen if you don't do that. He says, he says, pick up your cross. If any man will follow after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow after me. And the Lord knows, knows that way of what that, of what that will do for a man if he'll just make that choice. Our, our, our building with the Bible, our lesson this morning, we're talking about decisions that make a difference. And this morning's lesson was on when I choose, when I decide that, that, that for me, for me, my life, my life is not for me, it's for Jesus Christ. When I make that choice that for me to live is Christ, for me to live is Christ, it changes our lives. And the Lord knows what it will do. He knows what he has in his heart to give to us who will make that choice, who will choose that way. But he also knows what's down the path when we don't. Come out from among them, he says. Be ye separate, saith the Lord. And see, see if I'm not a father to you. See if I don't give you everything in a father's heart. But he knows the choices that we make. He knows the outcome when we won't come out and be separate. When we just keep hanging on to the world. When we just keep wanting to be what the world is and have what the world has. He knows where that will lead us. He knows what we're going to miss. Sometimes it's not just what we're going to get. It's sometimes what we miss out on if we don't choose what will keep us near the Lord. This is what we can learn. This is something we ought to learn about this passage of Scripture as we understand why he wept that day. Why he wept. And may the Lord help us, may the Lord help us as he visits us, that we just respond to him. We say yes to him. I don't want to miss a single thing of what the Lord has for me. I don't want to miss anything. I don't want to miss it out because of something the world showed me that was some substitute that is only temporary. I don't want to miss out on something the Lord has for me because Satan tempts me with some other counterfeit that looks better 
than what the Lord has for me because there isn't anything Satan can offer you that's better than what the Lord has for you. I don't want to miss out anything on what the Lord has for me because my flesh would rather have it my flesh's way because I know that in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. And the choices and decisions I make apart from the Lord, they're going to be the ways of death. Why did he weep? Why did he weep? Lord, we just ask you today in Jesus' name that you'd have your way in every heart, every life. Lord, if there's someone here today that has never chosen to receive you as their personal Savior, whatever it is that's keeping them, Lord, if it's something they hope to get out of the world or some pleasure of life they get from doing something they know, Lord, isn't pleasing to you, whatever it is, that is causing someone today to stop from repenting of their sin and trusting Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Heavenly Father, whatever that is, Lord, you know today where that's going to lead them and what they're going to lose. We pray today that today would be the day that they would respond to you. You're visiting them. God, you're making it known to them that you love them. You gave yourself for them on the cross. You paid their sin debt. And Lord, you will receive them. You will save them if they'll just respond to you. Lord, maybe someone today needs to slip out of their seat and come and say, Pastor, I, I, I've just never gotten serious about this. I need to trust the Lord. I need to be saved for myself, for my family, for my children. I need to trust the Lord. Lord, you're speaking to my heart. You've done it in the past. You're doing it again. I don't know if you'll ever do it again. But Lord, right now, I want to respond to you. Maybe you know the Lord is your personal Savior today, but God's been speaking to you. He's been visiting you. Choices and decisions. And He knows, he knows the choices and decisions we make, where they'll lead us, what, what they'll bring into our lives, or what we'll miss. May each and every one of us just want what the Lord wants for us, for our life, for our marriages, for our families, our children. May we want what the Lord wants. We can learn from this that He knows. He knows every step we take and where it leads us and what it will bring. And Lord, may we just desire to stay close to You, to take every step in step with You, to not make a choice or a decision without knowing, God, that it's Your will for our life being guided by Your Word. Lord, that's what's in Your heart for us. You want what's best. And God, You want it for us. Lord, help us to want it. Help us to remember why You wept that day as You saw that city and those people, moms and dads and families and what lay ahead of them because they did not know the moment you visited them. They, they did not respond to you. Lord, may we respond in our heart, in our life, in whatever area you're speaking to our heart, however you're visiting us. Lord, may we just say yes and may we draw close to you. We ask it in Jesus' name we pray. And amen.